All right, it is time to talk about a contentious topic, and that is trading in Dragon City. In Dragon City, we have a very useful thing called trading, which allows us to trade our Dragon Orbs with other players. So to be able to trade in Dragon City, you need to have the Orbs of a Dragon, at least a minimum amount, and you need to have at least some Essence in order to do that trade based on what rarity that dragon is, either legendary, heroic, or anything like that. So, that is easy enough to understand. But the thing that players always seem to get confused about and never really agree on is what value each type of dragon orb has. And what I mean by trading values in general is simply put, how does a player know the value of an individual dragon's orbs, like say this glorious dragon or this boulder dragon, for instance. How does a player know the value of a dragon's orbs and how can they create equal trades with other players without getting scammed or without accidentally scamming whoever they're trading with? I think the simplest way to think about dragon orb values is mainly based on the following three things. Number one, how easy are the orbs to obtain? Number two, how good is the dragon in PvP arenas? And number three, what rarity is the dragon? So is it a common, is it an uncommon, a legendary, or is it a heroic? But considering those three things, there are also two other additional things that I would highly suggest that you think about when you're trading. And that is number four, how desperate are you to get this dragon? Number five, are there any active quests or events for a specific dragon that you're looking for? Now, before you even say it, no, boulder orbs are not worth VIP dragon orbs. They are not worth any special event dragon orbs or anything of the kind. Alakazam orbs or recent legendary dragon orbs are not going to be equal value to high corrupted time. It is, uh, it's just, they're not equal. They are not going to be the same thing. And similarly, most legendary orbs are not going to be worth the same value as heroic orbs, just based on rarity issues. A breedable dragon is going to be worth far less than a VIP dragon. A rescue dragon is going to be worth far less than a VIP dragon. An arena dragon or any dragon where the orbs are commonly found in events is going to be less value than a VIP dragon. Breedables, rescues, and common event dragons are more or less all worth the same amount, so you can trade between those types of dragons without really thinking too much. The time where you'll need to put your thinking cap on, however, is when it comes to some of the most sought-after dragons in the game, VIPs and heroics. So let me go through an example, Hexed Vampire. Vampires are VIP dragons that aren't available via breeding, they're not available via rescues or normal events. The only time that you'd have a chance of getting vampires would be usually getting lucky with ads, or very very rarely we have vampire eggs available in collections, but that is quite rare. Of course these days most people end up summoning vampires by summoning them during summoning happy hour by doing one trade with someone else and then using 99 legendary joker orbs to summon the dragon. So the thing is you need to be able to at least do one trade with someone to be able to then summon the dragon during a summon happy hour. So if you're looking to do even just one trade of hex so you can summon her you should be looking to trade orbs of equal value with someone else. So what is going to be the most obvious thing that you can trade that's of equal value to Hex? Other vampires. Now, the most sought after vampires are typically going to be Hexed, Sinful, and Blood God. And that is mainly just because they are really decent dragons for new players and Blood God gets even better later on when he's all perked up. But long-term players or those looking to finish off their vampire collections will typically trade any vampire for any vampire, especially since they all produce food and they're all pretty decent in different arenas, maybe barring Usurper that is. 
But generally speaking, vampires for vampires will be equal traits. The only thing to think about in terms of Sinful and Blood God in particular is the fact that those two are collection dragons. So they are technically speaking worth a little bit more than the rest of the vampires just because they are that little bit more difficult to get via regular means. But because there's so many orbs of these dragons lying around, you will usually be able to find someone and probably a longer term player that will be willing to do any vampire trade for any vampire trade. So vampire for vampire seems pretty easy to understand and why they'd be fair. But what about the other VIP family dragons? Are they all equal like ascended for ascended or redemption for redemption? Generally speaking, yes. Now, the one thing to remember about these other VIP family dragons, especially with those such as Ascendeds and also Redemptions, is that we have V1 and V2 Ascendeds and such, which means that half of the family has one skill, half of the family has another. But in terms of how difficult those orbs are to actually obtain, they're generally quite even. Again, the only exception would be any special VIP collection dragons, but in terms of past dragons, especially from recent memory, they're all more or less worth the same. And you can typically even trade Ascendeds for Redemptions as well, but it depends on how desperate the player is for that particular VIP family's dragon. One exception to this rule, however, is mainly the Corrupted Dragons. Mainly because Corrupted Legend and Corrupted Chaos are actually a higher dragon category than the other regular Corrupted Dragons, which means they have higher stats and they're generally just better than the rest of them. So barring the recent Eternals chest that we've had, usually dragons such as Corrupted Metal, Corrupted Sea, Corrupted Ice aren't going to be worth quite as much as Corrupted Chaos or Corrupted Legend. And Corrupted Legend and Chaos are the collection dragons, so again, they are harder to get than the others because they're not available in the Corrupted Egg Chest that we get in events, so they are very difficult to get your hands on if you are a free-to-play player, and usually you'll end up either trading a lot for them or summoning them by getting gems from the orb shop, which is very, very costly. Now, one thing that can really screw with the perceived value of a dragon's orbs are events. If a dragon has recently been released and it's free to play acquirable in an event, even if it relies mainly on luck, typically the value of those orbs will go down slightly, at least for a certain amount of time. The exception to this would be if the dragon is an insanely good or is perceived to be an insanely good dragon such as dual perception so we can disagree on this but after dual perception was released in a pretty easily acquirable free-to-play maze event his orbs value should really have dropped quite a lot but because players thought that dual perception was like the bee's knees god's gift to earth uh, his orbs value didn't really diminish and even to this day they are valued very very highly. I think that players overall probably put him a little bit too high in terms of how good they think he is, mainly because we have a lot of win counters these days. He's still a very very good dragon but that is the reason why his orbs have stayed at such a high value, just because he is perceived to be such a good dragon. So mainly his position in the meta or perceived meta is what brings so much value to dual perceptions orbs when it comes to trading, even if he may be overvalued a little too much. So usually players will want really good VIP legends in exchange for any of dual perceptions orbs. Regular heroic dragons, including the 200 orb heroics, are typically generally all worth the same value. Some are perceived to be slightly better than others, such as High Toy Town, High Drowsy, and so on. And sometimes players will look for equal meta pick trades, so between those sorts of dragons. But generally speaking, they're all capable of being traded for each other. The only thing I'd be mindful of is the fact that the 200 orb dragons, their orbs have been really easy to acquire during their set events. So while their event is ongoing, their orbs are pretty easy to get a hold of. And so the value is quite low. 
The thing is, the, the longer that you hold on to those orbs, the more value they'll gain over time as players don't have as many orbs available. So even dragons such as, say, High Five now, you'll get a lot of players looking for orbs for those dragons because there's just not as many orbs available anymore. And that'll be the case for the 200 orb dragons as well, especially since they're 200 orb dragons to summon, which means anyone that wasn't there for their set event is going to need a hell of a lot more orbs to actually summon them. So while they might not be worth a hell of a lot now, the longer time goes on, you'll find that these dragons will probably be harder and harder to get summoned. Now, what about VIP heroics? Yeah, I know that most players want the best of the best for arenas, and so a lot of players are going to want to know how to get the right trades and equal fair trades for VIP orbs. The reality is VIP heroics are intended to be pay only or extreme luck only available for free to play players, meaning that they are the most difficult dragons to get a hold of for v free to play non-VIP players. So what's an equal trade for a VIP heroic? The only truly equal trade is going to be other VIP heroics. It is that simple. Some players will try to trade, say, high drowsy orbs for VIP heroic orbs, but considering that for drowsy you only need one trade to then be able to summon during summoning happy hour, but for VIP heroics you'd in fact need 401 orbs, plus 99 jokers, we're comparing apples to oranges at that point. But just think that if you yourself had a VIP heroic or some of their orbs and you wanted to trade them out, you'd probably be looking for other VIP heroics because that's fair, right? It, you have a dragon that's a heroic that's got tons of skills, so you want to trade it for another dragon that is a VIP heroic with tons of really useful skills. You've just got to think from the perspective of the other player, like if that were me, what would I want to be trading out for this value of orbs? But if you want to try and acquire the VIP heroic orbs without having VIP heroics yourself, it is possible, but it involves a very icky, disgusting thing that we call ratios. Now, Ratios are a whole ass thing, and they're the easiest way to get scammed in Dragon City. You might see players making trade offers in terms of ratios in various channels, and they might say something like, looking for high master karma can give high nest, high synchro, one to two ratio. LF meaning looking for, CG meaning can give, and then this one to two, which is the ratio of the trade that they'd be looking for. People mix up that number order quite a lot, but what they mean by that is for every single trade of, say, high nest or high synchro, you'd get half of the VIP heroic. So that means that for every single trade of the VIP heroic, you'd get two lots of the other orbs. So... For instance, if you do one trade of High Master Karma, if we jump into the game very quickly and we try and do a trade, if you try and do a trade for hero a Heroic Dragon, you'd need to do at least five orbs of that dragon. So what you do is you do five trades of High Master Karma for whatever Heroic you want, and then you would have to do a random VIP, not VIP, but a random Heroic trade for whatever heroic you were agreed to in the trade and then you would trade say high master karma dragon orbs out to them again that's the only way that you can avoid getting scammed in dragon c so just to go through that again trade number one would be times five hmk for times five high nest trade two would be times five random heroic orbs for times five high nest and then you would repeat repeat repeat. This way, if a player does try and scam you and run away with your orbs, you're only going to lose at max five of your VIP heroic orbs at once. But if you did, say, 50 trades in a row with that person, and then you got on to doing the ratio side, so the other 50 or so orbs that you were owed from that person, they could just, you know, quit the trade, leave the alliance, and you'd never see them again 
and now you're down for the ratio trade that you agreed to. This is the only way by doing it one by one to avoid getting scammed when it comes to ratio trades. And I highly recommend doing this for all ratio trades that you ever do in Dragon City. But the big issue with doing ratio trades in general is the amount of essence that you would end up wasting. Because when you go to do a trade with someone, it costs two essence for you to set up the trade, as you can see here. But the person that accepts the trade, it would cost them a single essence to accept it. And you can see that here. If we were to accept this legendary trade, it would cost us one essence to accept that trade in. But when you're going outward and the one setting up the trade, it costs two essence. And so splitting the essence use for players as well is another really big part of trading because it is actually really difficult to get your hands on heroic and legendary trade essence. And if you do a lot of heroic trading, especially if you're looking for VIP heroic trades, Pretty much everyone that does frequent heroic trades is going to be low on heroic essence. The only way that you can get more essence is by like playing the various events, getting it from collections, and there usually isn't a ton available. So this is another thing that you have to keep in mind when you're doing trades with other people and especially ratio trades as to what the essence usage is on each side. So that's another thing that you should definitely clarify before you do any trades with another player. But if you are looking to get VIP heroics, I don't recommend doing ratio trades for them for this reason. But if the only way that you're going to be able to get them because you don't have VIP heroic orbs of your own, then the only way may be ratio trades, but you'd have to be really careful with them. Some players try to do legendary for heroic cross trading at times, but for similar reasons as what I just stated, mainly essence waste and the potential to get scammed, I highly recommend against ever doing legend for heroic or vice versa trades. But while going through the Dragon City social media channels, you may hear stories from certain people saying, Oh, but I traded my boulder orbs for corrupted primal orbs, or I traded my high malicious orbs for high ascended supreme one-to-one -one ratio. But the reality is some of these players either knowingly tried to scam the other user, or they were well known to the person that they were trading with, so it might be a friend or a long-term alliance mate, and so they don't mind doing less desirable trades with each other because they know they're probably going to do more trades later on to make up for any lost value. If you are trading or you are attempting to trade with any random person, like if it's a random person on the Dragon City social media channels, or say it's just someone that's in your alliance that you don't know too well, you should always be trying to do fair trades. Trying to get more value out of a trade than the other person, which is in a way kind of trying to scam them out of value, is a really easy way of making the, the health of the trading community worse overall. Especially if you run into a new player who say they're in your alliance or you see them on social media and say they offer a trade that is like insanely good for you. So say they're trying to, they're giving out say hexed vampire orbs in exchange for boulder orbs. So you'd get the hexed vampire and they're trading or they get back like boulder dragon orbs for example. If you see a trade like that or someone is offering it on any of the social media channels, I'd highly recommend confirming with them first if they actually know the value of those orbs. And this would be the same thing if, say, you went to trade with someone and you saw that they were requesting Deluge and they, were, they wanted back a dragon like, say, sinful vampires orbs i can't select him at the moment let's think of another one uh let's say why well, offers coming up now or pain uh but let's say greedy so a request of deluge in exchange for greedy unless you actually confirm with this person that they know that deluge orbs are permanently farmable in legendary rescues 
before that I would not accept this trade even though for me this would be an insanely good trade because we're getting so much extra value compared to them who is basically trading out you know a limited time dragon's orbs for a dragon that is very readily available I know that players out there would say well it's their fault if they don't know any better they should just learn the game the thing is, new players are already trying to take in so much information, so if you just take advantage of their lack of knowledge to your own benefit, I've seen players quit because they got so duped by players before. And at the same time, if they had these really insanely good orbs, and then they realize this a few weeks later, and it's like, oh, but I just traded all of those out for garbage, you're just going to make their experience so much worse, and there's absolutely no reason to do that. If you wanted to be someone that keeps a healthy trading community and keeps players playing and keeps players happy and you don't want people to wish death upon you, you should always be trying to do fair trades with each other. But where can you actually go to find trades in Dragon City? Well, the very first place that I would personally check would be the trading hub in the official Dragon City Discord server, just because it's one of the most active channels. People post their can gives, looking fors, and the players are actively monitors. So if there's any scammers or anything, they're normally banned or taken off this list. But you'll find tons of trades in this channel. The next place that I would personally check would be, say, the trading channel in my Discord server or any other trading channel for other games. So, like, the other Dragon City gamers hang around in. So, like, we've got trades in my Discord server. I know of a few other trading channels in other Discord servers. Next place I would probably check after that would be somewhere like the Dragon City subreddit. Even though it's not the most active place ever, there are some players here and you do get some trades in here, especially some pretty decent value trades. You can also check the Dragon City trading groups on Facebook. So usually you'd have to join the groups and then you'd be able to set up trades with other people. Just bear in mind that the Dragon City Facebook groups are notorious for really bad ratio trades. I will say that before you get involved with them, you have to be very careful about trading in the Facebook groups in particular, okay? But the very first place that you should really be checking before anywhere else is your own alliance. You have your alliance chat, you can talk to your alliance members, you can organize trades with people, and if it stays within your alliance, that means that you can trade at any time and you don't have to worry about alliance chess. You will get a lot more success trying to trade with people if you attempt to do the trades between alliance chess periods because anyone that is an active player will typically be in an alliance that is currently taking part in an alliance chest and so during that time they won't be able to leave their alliance unless they want to get kicked from their alliance in future for quitting during an alliance chest so it is best to start posting just before the end of an alliance chest or during the interim between alliance chests so that then you can do that trade when there is no currently active alliance chest. You will have a lot more success if you do it during that time, trust me. One family of dragons that I wanted to make a particular point and warning about were the Walking Dead dragon family. The Walking Dead dragons were announced pretty recently that they would no longer be available after their recent events and after the most recent time that they were put on sale. So that means that the orbs for these dragons aren't going to become available at any time in the future. That is assuming that what Social Point said isn't a lie. But what this means is that over time, orbs for the Walking Dead dragons are only going to increase in value. The reason being that as people empower their existing ones, there's going to be fewer The Walking Dead Dragon orbs in general around. And since they're 200 orb dragons, you can't keep cycle ranking them up. So this means that anyone that holds on to their The Walking Dead Dragon orbs is only going to see their value skyrocket the longer that they wait and hoard them. So because of this, since these orbs are no longer going to be available, I would say that these are probably if not the most valuable legendary dragon orbs in the game currently, simply because they are no longer available and will not be made available. 
if what Social Point said is true. So if you are going to try and trade for the Walking Dead Dragons, I would say that the only suitable trade for them is actually going to be ratio trades, even if you are trading VIPs, because they are VIPs, but now they're no longer available VIPs. They are on the next level of VIPs because you can't get them anymore. So if you are going to trade for them, expect them to be ratios, and I'd expect some crazy ratio trades for some players because the Walking Dead dragons are pretty damn good. Now, Michonne here, she was the easiest the Walking Dead dragon to get for free-to-play players because her event was really easy, tons of free orbs for her. But even then, even her orbs are going to be worth more than VIP dragon orbs as time goes on, and I think even right now they are simply because there's going to be no other way to get more orbs for her, whereas dragons like Jewel Perception and the others, they're available in egg chests right now, and they may be available in other events, but the Walking Dead dragons, that's it. They're done. So it's possible to get close to any orbs for any dragon in Dragon City if you want them bad enough, but the thing is, if you want to keep the trading community healthy and you want the most success with trading, you should try and do equal one-to-one -one trades wherever possible. But sometimes you might end up doing crazy trades with someone if you end up doing something like a one-to-five ratio trade. It is possible. You can get pretty much anything you want in this game if you offer enough for it. But... Uh, I, th I think just think about it. how would you want to be treated and what would you want to be trading with if you were looking to trade out your orbs. It's just treat others how you would want to be treated, you know?